everybody hear me okay? So these two businesses here um, are also our sponsors for this project, so you'll find the stickers on the um, front of the buildings. Um, and they're, they're both, along with the Reese building and uh, the Underwood building, which is where we started with Cafe Saigon, they're all historic buildings. And so not only were they um, rich in this cultural history, but they're also uh, historic, architecturally historic history as well. Um, and so this is the Rucker building, um, and uh, this, they, these two buildings date to about the mid-1920s. Um, and so they've had, as you'll see from the pictures, especially if you go to the website, they've had many lives. Um, and so, again, Little Saigon was a very significant chapter, uh, but you can get a sense of this kind of constant reuse of, of these historic buildings and this particular neighborhood. Is this for a lot of gestures? <laughs> no, no, I don't think so. Yeah, this is all part of the restaurant. Let me add a little bit more. I'm also part of the Arlington History Task Force. And what we're doing today is we're trying to preserve history for you know from the past generation for today and for the future as well. So what we're looking for are photos, pictures, writings, anything that you have that you can offer so that the library of um, uh, the Central Library of Arlington can collect those and they will preserve them and they will put them in the um, for the Central History um, Preservation Program. So any photos that you have, writing, newspaper, anything that you have within your family please do share with us, and you can share that either through me or through the Arlington Task Force. And also collecting more oral histories too, so if you have some memories that you'd like to share, and this is something that, um, you know, time goes by and these things get forgotten, so we're really trying to make a push on this 40th anniversary to try to collect as much as we can, um, both memorabilia and pictures, as well as because of your memories. So we are still doing oral histories, as many of our participants here have, um, and we, uh, again, we'll store those at the Center for Local History. The eyes are looking at everybody. That's the eye above the two. <laughs> that's the left and right. That's the base. That's the base. That's the base. So, Queen B, for those who uh, have been there, it's the final day over here. So, again, if you look at the pictures, these businesses were not only occupied by various businesses over the years, but they were actually subdivided. And so, if you look at the fronts of these, each one of these window bays was a different business as well as the uh, record building. And so you have, in many cases, you know, three, four, or five different businesses in these storefronts, uh, not necessarily sharing space, they had their own subdivided space, but some did share spaces, especially in some larger stores. Um, so there was really a uh, pretty wide diversity. You had tax accountants, and Mr. Mr. Vick. Mr. Vick uh, remembers uh, in your oral history, talking about all the different types of businesses that were here. Um, so it wasn't just restaurants, it wasn't just Clothing stores, jewelry, jewelry store, house wares. So it's interesting to note the only exception that is Nambia did purchase their building, which is probably the only reason they're still here. Which one did? Nambia. So, oh, that so one down there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so that's why it's. Oh. And refused to sell when the huge thing was built next door. Good for that. Good for that. Let's well, hold out to the Fitzgerald's community. No, we used to have a big deck out in the back where you could eat. It's now built on. Yeah. So um, at this point, um, and this is chronology again, can we step this way, please? So at this point in the chronology, we're looking at kind of the, the end of Little Saigon as, as it was known in its heyday. And while some businesses did go to, Little, uh, to Eden Center, uh, many of them moved to other locations, either here in Clarendon as spaces opened up. Um, I believe my aunt moved to uh, Clarendon Ballroom for a while. Um, and then eventually they would move to maybe other places aside from Eden Center. So they might move to Maryland or um, you know, parts of Montgomery County. And so eventually uh, many of those businesses that moved um, still closed because, again, I'll hand it over, but um, as the younger generations were growing up, they were looking at doing other things. Even the ones that were helping with the store during the, the 70s and 80s went on to do, you know, become uh, different professions and so on. And so there was um, a pretty significant change as the, um, the children of the first 
uh, wave of immigrants started to um, retire, and they they didn't have a second generation to turn it over to. So that was something that um, I think coincided with that, um, and then the '90s and early 2000s. And so those those businesses eventually would would close. The ones that remain in Eaton Center, I think, are mostly still still around. Any uh, final thoughts from our uh, our guest speakers?